Hi, I'm Tim Sinclair Pierce of QMRE. We are Biofabrics UK and Air's distributor and operator of equipment here in the southeast of England. We constructed this site to show the P250 in the background there uh, and this site was set up with an office and, uh, and containers uh, as in a compound specifically to demo the P250 biofabric machinery. To give you an idea of what we're doing here specifically we have a store container here uh, which has uh, polyolefins inside, predominantly PP and LDPE, uh, which are in this particular case quite clean, uh, but of mixed variety and thicknesses. Uh, they are quite clean uh, specifically because we are setting a benchmark for the initial fuels we're producing. However, we can take contaminated stock uh, to, a, to a, a very low degree uh, for demonstration purposes um, but uh, in in the real world we will be able to clean and uh, dry certain other stocks we would normally um, bring the stocks to the machine uh, in a format uh, of which my colleague here mark is just about to demonstrate um, in in normal circumstances in the larger machinery um, these would go in in bales but um, these are being hand uh, uh, put into the machine and sorted and put in just to size reduce them to give a, a demonstration as it happens the machine already has some stock in it uh, but we'll feed a little bit more through to show you how the system works. The size reduction equipment will take the material down to a, uh, the size of a coin uh, it'll be fed through this vacuum cable and into the silo. To give you an idea of what it looks like inside the silo, because it's not so easy to see, uh, here's something we prepared a bit earlier. Um, you can see it's a, a bit of a jazz of uh, different colours of plastic. Uh, again, the difficult type of product to, uh, uh, to handle for most people are the soft plastics. So. These, these soft materials, having been size reduced, pass through the, uh, the, the vacuum pipe, up and over the top into the, the day silo. The day silo is usually filled in the morning and at night. This one would probably carry about 125 kilos of each. And you can see the, the small items of uh, plastic flying around inside. Um, and that they, they are agitated by the uh, agitator inside which will basically move to push the uh, cut plastic uh, down through a, a, a section in one, one corner and drop through this uh, funnel section and to the screw which is off to the left hand side and as you can see here the Archimedes screw is propelling uh, the, the size reduced material up to the top and in towards the unit where it drops again into a stuffer unit. This, um, this process is computer controlled and the machine will automatically know when it has enough and the, the stuffer system here uh, will tell it to uh, switch off and wait until it actually needs any more. The stuffer is flattening the material and pushing it into the uh, extruder. Uh, the extruder is running at around 200 degrees and that basically is making the product into a, a bubblegum constituency um, so it's a bit putty like by the time it's, uh, it's pushed in here so that it's not too small to go into the thermal kettle reactor. Uh, it needs to have some consistency to it so it goes from these small particles here, it's, uh, it's heated as a, a preparation into a putty form and then, it, and then it's, uh, it's pushed into the reactor and these sensors are giving us information about the whole process. 
uh, with inside the uh, the reactor, which we call a thermal kettle, uh, there's another Archimedes screw. And the Archimedes screw, by the time it gets about halfway up here, uh, goes from a solid Archimedes screw uh, into a skeletal format. And that's because when we get towards the top of the process, uh, we're already creating gases. The, the heat within the process um, is it's, this is a quite a unique process because most was done with um, uh, a kettle with uh, a, like a, a drum. Uh, this is actually a tube and these are electronic gauntlets around the outside of the um, thermal kettle. Nobody else does it like this apart from biofabric. Um, and the, the temperatures running in each of these uh, uh, gauntlets is probably between about 450 degrees up to about 500 degrees when we get to the top. Um, the sensors on the side of the machine give us all the information and uh, that's fed over the computer systems. The, the separator is here and this is where uh, a lot of the magic happens because we have uh, the tower is basically where the gases are, uh, are forming and we have uh, different levels of gas and different thicknesses the thinnest of the t them all is at the top and that's the, the lightest fraction is the one that we, we, we draw off to run the machine. The, the heavier fractions are, are, are inside the tower and towards the bottom here the, the heaviest fraction would be what we call carbon ash. Uh, this is the waste product and in this case it's manually detached uh, but in the case of a P5000 it's a fully automated system. Uh, so within the tower, once the, the, the tower starts to send it, uh, the, uh, materials through, gases through, they're taken into these cooling towers and the cooling towers basically are uh, fed through um, cooling radiators uh, of, of this type. Um, uh, they, will, they're cool, cooling uh, they, they actually cool the, uh, the sections and send the uh, information back to make sure that the the, uh, the the gases are turning back into solids effectively as a liquid uh, because they're being cooled. Uh, we've got two of those and uh, one at the front of the machine and one at the back. So we come back round and out of the machine. I can show you around the other side. have a, a glance at the end of the machine here to see that the, uh, the stuffer is still working and then inside here the, the gas that we're taking off the, the lightest fraction is coming out of this stainless steel pipe um, and off the top of the system and we're not using that as a we cannot turn that back into a, a liquid so that goes off in this pipe and goes over to the gen set and we'll come back to that in a minute so you can still see the stuffers sending uh, raw material into the extruder and on the left you can see the reactor is moving slowly but the, the movement appears slow but you can actually see it and at that speed it's still moving 250 kilos per day. So if we come around this side um, you can see uh, the other side of the cooling towers um, and the pumps which are feeding the uh, what is now a liquid around these pipes. Um, the pipes are, are, are trying to keep the, the product at a reasonable temperature. Um, we, we want to cool it but we don't want to cool it too quickly. Um, so it's all being measured and we can if we wish at this point we can take draw off some samples which we will do in a moment. Uh, from that tap. This is the, uh, uh, the Siemens Biofabric computer system uh, and it gives us um, a vast amount of information every day. Um, more importantly uh, than just in, in, in this environment inside the container, uh, we also have the benefit that um, in our office we'll have this on our computer systems uh, and the operator will also have it on his phone uh, or iPad. Um, we're just changing over to show you the other, another screen which is the startup uh, section of the system uh, and so you can see here to the left hand side in the middle 
uh, the extruder um, and the temperatures at around 200 in the middle and then in the section, central section the uh, thermal kettle the reactor is 430, 429, uh, 463, 459 and they're the sections of the reactor and then we've got the separating system as you can see at 594 degrees uh, one of the cooling, cooling towers is shown there as well on the right hand side which is I think is around about 106 degrees as I can see it there so if we come back out of here for a second um, I think we'll just ask Steve if he could um, give us a demonstration of some oil coming out um, so here we go I think we will be ready in a second to show you um, from the tap on the left hand side here um, that it's, a, it's like a bleed tap he's just changing the settings so that we can shut some of the pipe work above it down a bit but now as you can see we can let some of the oil out of the system uh, so what we actually saw uh, a few moments ago uh, going in as particles of plastic uh, jazz um, have now actually gone into the system through reactors, through the coolers and separators and um, back into an oil. So the, um, the gas from the system is, uh, is basically running over to the genset um, and we can see the pipe work here on the floor um, is feeding that over to um, this section. This section basically is cleaning the gas, we're storing it in a, a small gas tank and then we're cleaning the gas uh, before we combust it in the genset. So the pipe work then will take the gas uh, back out through to into the uh, inlet manifold of the um, the genset, which is basically a diesel style genset, uh, diesel generator, um, but we're we're feeding 50% uh, gas in uh, to the inlet manifold in this particular case. Um, the interesting thing is from that that um, we're actually getting a greater amount of power, closer to 70% from the gas uh, and 30% diesel. But the important thing is um, that if you see on the top of the machine where the, uh, with the, where the uh, exhaust is, uh, if you look over the top, uh, the combustion of the system is such that uh, we are getting less than 20% uh, of emissions that we would normally get uh, from uh, diesel. And as you can see, uh, over the P250 or anything around the P250, there is no emission whatsoever and the, uh, the power is all being supplied by the genset which you were just looking at. I think this is true to say this is unique um, and very clean. The outturn materials which we're producing in oils that Steve didn't take out in the sample pot or the right there, they're going into the barrels and just to uh, run through that again if we, um, if we if we chose we could obviously um, go a stage further than the, the clean materials that we have uh, in the um, bowls on the floor there we could in fact go one stage further back than the genset itself um, and we could put in a, a, a further cleaning and size reduction unit and a cyclone to clean the plastic on the way in um, if required which would come in in bales um, we would be still generating our own power we would then put that into a, a much larger um, size reduction unit there which would still be uh, that would probably be a conveyor supplied and then instead of the silo being inside the P250 it would probably be vertically fed over the top of each of the machines this being a P250 but obviously we would, uh, they would be what P1000s and then off to the side we would have the uh, offtake. Uh, thank you for listening.